Support Wrestle Talk. Thank you for your support on Patreon. Kratos's forgotten son, Chris Petro. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk Super Duper News. I'm Ollie Davis. We've got a packed show for you today, including the leaked plans for Money in the Bank, the latest on Leo Rush's backstage heat, and the real reason why a WWE star was released, while another one is being made to stay. Click the timestamps in the video description below to jump to any of those stories right now. And make sure to have a super click party. Super bicycle kick. And give us a subscribe, click the thumbs up button and answer our question of the day down below. Who should win the men's money in the bank match? Because I'll be replying to people in the comments from out of nowhere telling you all the correct answer is Robert Roode. And also click the link in the video description below to get your tickets to WrestleTalk's live show in London next week, where Luke Laurie, Pete, Randy, Andy, Datsun and I will be screening the classic WCW wrestling film Ready to Rumble in Leicester Square's Prince Charles Cinema with a live wrestle ramble afterwards. And you never know who might fricking turn up. WWE Universal Champion Seth Frickin' Rollins will not be at WrestleTalk's live in London screening of Ready to Rumble. This reference was only intended for segue purposes. Because Seth Rollins is turning up everywhere at the moment. To celebrate Raw being in their top champion's home state of Iowa last week, WWE arranged for a surprise Rollins appearance at the promotion where he first made his name, SCW Pro. I want to bring up the WWE Universal Champion! SCW has always had a special place in my heart, and I say this, I mean it from the bottom of my heart, I would not be who I am, I would not be where I'm at if it wasn't for this place, having shows, having fans like you guys who are passionate about me and this business from the very beginning. I'm just going to assume CM Punk was also there wearing a hoodie or a mask. And SCW Pro wasn't the only indie promotion Seth visited. He also showed up in NXT where, oh my god, what's happened to that referee's leg? At Thursday's NXT live event in Omaha, Nebraska, Velveteen Dream retained his North American Championship against Tyler Breeze. But that isn't the main story coming out of the show, because it also saw one of the most gruesome ref bumps of all time. Ref bump! NXT official Tom Caster somehow suffered a broken leg during the main event. But in some New Japan level no-selling, he still counted the pin. Here's a video clip of the incident. You might want to watch it through your fingers like this. Dude, that's the second guy. Caster finished the match. Considering how a light breeze can usually knock out a referee for the rest of a match, that's one tough official. Unfortunately, that's not the weekend's only injury. As Impact's new world champion Brian Cage was rushed to hospital following his title win at last night's Rebellion pay-per-view. After Tessa Blanchard beat the coming out of retirement Gail Kim, and LAX became the new tag team champions after defeating the Lucha Bros Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix in a full metal mayhem match, Cage overcame the dastardly heel odds in champion Johnny Impact to win the world title. But his victory was short-lived, as former Ring of Honor and New Japan star Michael Elgin then debuted in Impact to lay Cage out with a powerbomb, presumably setting up the next main event feud. Taking that powerbomb probably wasn't the best idea though, as Cage had reportedly injured his back earlier in the match, as Impact's official Twitter account posted shortly after the show. Breaking! Brian Cage has been rushed to the emergency room after his match with Johnny Impact. More updates to come. With the Wrestling Observer adding, Cage was taken to hospital because he was having issues walking backstage afterwards. Hopefully WWE 
WWE can avoid any such injuries in their next annual Everyone Takes Crazy Bumps match. Because as Chopper Pete laid out in yesterday's video, the promotion is struggling with a lot of injuries already. It's been reported that local advertisements for the 19th of May's Money in the Bank pay-per-view has already leaked who will be competing in the men's ladder match, with the graphic revealing Drew McIntyre, Cesaro, Rey Mysterio, Ricochet, Alistair Black, Andrade and Lars Sullivan as taking part, where, presumably, Ricochet will flip off everything. Macho Main on Reddit, however, reckons the leaked advert could be a fake. By using the same technique cops used to catch bad guys in the 40s, a typewriter they used to write letters on. Macho Main points out, see, that the already officially released graphic for Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles at the event has one type of R, with a slight gap where the rounded part joins the straight line. But the alleged leaked image has the R joined up. We got them, boys! We'll find out officially tonight, as Alexa Bliss is set to announce the participants on Raw in her Moment of Bliss segment. Why is your talk show still a thing? I wanted to stop. And for a change, 2019's Money in the Bank match is quite a desirable thing to be a part of, as WrestleVotes are reporting the revolutionary idea that this year's winner will come out of the whole process looking like a star. The feeling backstage is that they have completely blown the winners and cash-ins the last two years. It really is a new era. A new era that might not involve Leo Rush. Dave Meltzer reported in last Thursday's Wrestling Observer newsletter that there's backstage heat on Rush, which might be why he wasn't around on last week's Raw, claiming it's to do with his cocky attitude. The story goes that he's made it very clear to many people that he thinks he should be the top guy on the brand, and hasn't been shy about saying it. Now Fightful has added more details behind the backstage heat, and how it involves a locker room incident with Finn Balor. Apparently the backstage dislike of him stems from Rush's insistence to have his wife present at almost all times, with Leo reportedly telling roster members that he hopes to get a reality TV show with her. This led to Balor taking Leo to one side a few months ago, making an effort to give Rush advice, by telling him it's quite likely that Vince McMahon wouldn't take kindly to his wife sitting in on rehearsals. And Rush responded, unfavorably. Apparently this is one of a few incidents where Leo has rubbed the locker room the wrong way, and the roster has wanted him out of the locker room for quite a while. Rush has seemingly addressed those rumors on Twitter, posting, Some of the stuff that I read after getting tagged in on these dirt sheets are ridiculous, but since you all are recording my every move, put this one in your newest article for me. Where I'm from, I was taught to value hard work, not complacency. Push and believe in yourself past expectations other people have made for you. Put your family in God first before anything. Remain humble, but stay hungry. Fight for the things you believe in and never apologize for being you. Spread the word. Hashtag heal. If Fightful are to be believed though, he really should consider apologizing for being him. As their sources quoted saying, Rush would be very lucky to be back on the main roster anytime soon, if ever. Leo Rush to AEW confirmed. If only Luke Harper could be so lucky. Harper publicly asked WWE for his release on Twitter two weeks ago, trying the same tactic that helped Ty Dillinger leave the company back in February. But it seems WWE's patience with their contracted wrestlers asking to leave has run out, as this time they're reportedly not just keeping Harper under contract, they're going to make him stay with the company even longer. Even though Harper's deal expires this November, WWE have reportedly added another six months onto his contract to make up the time he missed last year when he was out due to wrist surgery. Surgery, claiming Luke's deal was frozen while he wasn't wrestling. The Wrestling Observer have claimed Harper was planned for a feud with Sami Zayn, but that's now been scrapped, most likely because of Luke requesting his release. So why are some people like Ty Dillinger, Dean Ambrose and Hideo Itami released, while others like Harper, Sasha Banks and The Revival are forced to stick around? Going by the most recent departure from the company, 50-year-old Goldust, who left WWE last weekend to go directly to rival All Elite Wrestling for a match against his real-life brother Cody Rhodes, it's because 
of Triple H. Goldust's request to leave the company was granted back in January, and his 90-day non-compete clause expired last weekend when he announced his move to AEW. Dave Meltzer revealed on Wrestling Observer Radio that Vince McMahon doesn't want to release anyone right now, which is why the likes of Banks, Harper, and The Revival remain under contract. Goldust was granted his release, though, because Triple H persuaded Vince to let him go, possibly because of Hunter's respect for the Rhodes family. Unfortunately for Harper, there's no such people fighting for his cause backstage. Come see WrestleTalk live in London with me, Luke and Laurie, doing a live Wrestle Ramble show and a screening of the 2000 wrestling movie Ready to Rumble. Click the link on the right to get your tickets now and watch mine and Laurie's massive Avengers Endgame review over on Screenstalker by clicking the video beneath that. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was wrestling.